but I'm known to everybody as Little Richard, the architect of rock and roll. I am the originator. I am the innovator. I am the emancipator. I'm the motivator. I can see that achieved it, defined it, refined it, molded it, sold it, then the white man stole it. <laughs> What day is it? Do days exist without calendars? Does time pass when there are no human hands left to wind the clocks? In writing down my daily life, I tell myself I shall preserve music history between the dark covers of this little podcast. It's the Going Out Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. We are, uh, <laughs> with, with a very relevant feeling album for this week <laughs> that we got for you for, for the request. <laughs> We've got two very different albums in the way that one of which there is hardly anything to say about it and the other one there's might be too much too much to say but we'll get to those in a second uh the two listener requested album reviews first we gotta talk about our girl doja cat making it fucking happen in 2020 it's nikki doja i believe beyonce and Megan Thee Stallion, they like all have, you know, the the top songs in the country right now as like, just like black women, like just the fact that that's happening right now. You, you know? fucking love to see it. It's, it's Doja yeah. Cat and Nicki Minaj at number one, and then you got uh, Savage by Megan Thee Stallion and Beyonce. Which a fucking untouchable two. goddamn remix. <laughs> Both. I, I, I'll say that the Savage remake is better than the Say So remake, only because mm-hmm. honestly... Say So didn't really need a remix. I think it was fine on its own. It didn't really need anything additional there. Savage kind of did, in my opinion. Um, I still stand by that boss bitch from the uh, Birds of Prey soundtrack, the Doja Cat song. Put Nikki on that, because that song was not (laughs) only too short. Yeah, yeah. It's also way more befitting of uh, Nikki's uh, style. Another thing that I think should be uh, should be mentioned <laughs> that it's Nikki's first number one. Also, oh oh wow! I Jesus. Uh, what in the world is going on? <laughs> I remember someone bringing up like a couple of years ago. Someone had like been like, oh yeah, she's the first uh, black female artist to have like this uh, you know a top ten hit or something mm. like that, like Nicki Minaj, and it was just kind of like. What the hell took so long? Have there not been anyone? Like, are you serious? <laughs> like, Missy Elliott? For real? <laughs> yeah. No, because wasn't it she had gotten to number two with, like, under construction, uh, uh, I believe it was Work It. Yeah, and it was just like, oh my god! Anaconda got to number two. Wow. Didn't get to number one. Um, so, people could make the argument that the notoriety of Nicki Minaj on the remix was what got Say So to number one. But if this is Nicki's num- first number one single, maybe that's not the case. Maybe uh, <laughs> maybe she didn't help out all that it, it much. It was the joint powers there. What some could also possibly argue mm. <laughs> is, is this tweet that, uh, that Doja Cat uh, posted a few, uh, few days before the announcement. If Say So got to number one, she would, quote, show my boobs real hard, which... Real hard. Real hard, which the verbiage alone, even out of the context of Doja Cat's Twitter, which is just shitpost after shitpost with meme uh, headers and uh, handles... Her Twitter is, like, nonstop gags and jokes, never really to be taken seriously. Like Lil Nas X's uh, uh, Twitter. But see, what you get with Lil Nas X, you get the fucking nude pics. You don't get those with Doja Cat. (laughs) So, unfortunately for some, I assume, because some dudes, some fucking dudes, man, taking this shit way too serious they saw a tweet right the tweet that you said and then all of a sudden there was a spike in uh listenership on streaming platforms and right the idea is that a whole bunch of trolls are getting mad at her for not actually showing her tits and there's also the video which pissed off a good bit of folks oh my god 
I just realized I have to show my boobs real hard. Uh, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. I did play you. I'm not showing my boobs real hard, man. You got fucking played. You got played. Look at yourself. I will say, like, I do think the disproportionate smugness with which she is, like, <laughs> doing it, as if, like, she came up with this, like, huge troll, like, I got you. Like, I mean, all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't even take it like that. I think it's just kind of, like, in the moment, like, man, I'm going to make a joke yeah. about this. I don't think she actually yeah, thinks she's think getting one over on anyone. That can get exaggerated if you were someone who wanted to see her. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's not like she set up a fucking go for me or some shit and was like i'll show my tits you know if this thing happens no it was just kind of like yeah eh, flippantly said some shit on twitter like it just feels kind of annoying because you know it's not like she's a passive person in relation to her saying shit online in hopes that it'll generate some buzz for her you know what i'm saying like so there's that level of like oh i you know oh did i fool people and get me in everyone here ha, ha. you know like there's that but at the same time yeah like it just doesn't feel like that big of a thing in the first place, you know what I mean? No, I mean, it was probably gonna happen anyway. It's an extremely popular song, so... Yeah. I don't know exactly how much the thirsty dudes on Twitter really helped propel this song. I mean, it's getting a lot of radio play. It's fucking everywhere. Um, there was the remix. I don't know how much that helped, but I'm sure it didn't hurt. So, I don't know. I also don't picture... Like, I saw one video where it was like a... I, I, God, I hope it was a joke. Where someone had, like, three laptops and, like, 12 cell phones and they all had Spotify open and they were all streaming Say So at the same time. If anyone was even, like, slightly peeved about it, it's like, I don't know, man, don't you have enough titties on the internet for free? That's <laughs> like what I'm <laughs> saying, man! There is no shortage out there! <laughs> Like, are we past this? I thought after Cardi B, we were past this. <laughs> the fucking, the entitlement. The fucking <laughs> entitlement. And even if you were, like, someone who, like, just coming across that, like, how could you even be that gullible? It's like, do you really think the superstar person is going to do that? Like, come on, people. <laughs> to the folks out there, because I saw some screenshots of dudes saying they were going to, like, hack Doja's shit and try to, like, Get the nudes there away. Like, what? Come. Oh my god. Yeah, pe people taking this shit F way too fucking serious. I understand, like you said, lockdown. God is feeling a little antsy. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just dudes being it's fucking too dudes. Hot. <laughs> god damn, y'all. But there was another thing you had mentioned that I think <laughs> is also very much worth our time. Uh, Quibi is in the news because it sucks and no one's <laughs> using it. Oh, funny. Wasn't there a quote of like Jeffrey uh, Katzenmeyer, Katzenberg? <laughs> Katzenberg, or yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who, who had started the app and he was like, no, this app isn't for people at home. It's for people on the go. <laughs> it's like, ooh, oof. <laughs> Big oof, my dude. Uh, Quibi, the app. Bad diving. <laughs> The video streaming service, not free, mind you, where you can watch <laughs> short clips, about six to ten minutes, uh, with no social media in, uh, integration. So if you yeah. wanted to share something on Twitter or Facebook, not too bad, can't do that. You uh, can't screen cap. <laughs> can't screen cap. If you wanted to stream it on anything but your phone, too fuck bad. Quibi's garbage. It's, it wasn't <laughs> thought out well at all. Who, why, in an age when you have unlimited free entertainment on YouTube, would you pay for Quibi? I don't get it. But relevant to our show and mm. something that we've said in our review of The Big Day, <laughs> Chance's fourth or fifth debut album... <laughs> We made a joke that Chance was going to get a series on TikTok. That's right. And lo and behold, <laughs> your boy, he's got a little a L I apostrophe L series on Ooh. Quibi. <laughs> Big things happening for Chance the Rapper onward and upward. What what is he doing on this dumbass app? Not the Meet the Tylers uh, TV show I was expecting. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but instead, they got him doing this uh, 
doing this uh punked reboot. <laughs> oh. Which is like it just just I, I heard it out of someone's lips as they were saying it like they got chance the rapper to do punked and it's just like immediately on his face is like that doesn't work at all he's too much of a nice person like <laughs> on his face the first thing someone would say to you as soon as you pitched that would be like that doesn't work he's too much of a nice guy <laughs> it's not so much we got to make entertaining programming it's more or less we got to make the lull to random shit and put big names in it that'll get people talking so they'll yeah. at least pay to see it. They might not stick around to watch it again, but at least we'll get them in the door. They want to see the spectacle of what it is. We're, go- we're going to get a fucking courtroom show and we're going to get Chrissy <laughs> goddamn Teigen <laughs> as the judge. Like, who I'm fucking... Like, <laughs> and now, no one's fucking with fucking making my account private at 12.8 million followers as Chrissy Teigen. <laughs> All no these fucking first fuck. draft ideas with celebrities. That's basically it, dude. They've got this unlimited bank role. They get the Katzenberg money. Let's look at the biggest names we can think of. Let's throw them in any kind of situation. And that's what fucking... Is it called Punked? Yeah. Like, Ew. it's still called Punked. No! And the one uh, prank that, I, that I, I'd that i heard about, it's like, it's not even worth it. It's like... Oh, one of the Migos gets a remote control car and accidentally crashes it uh, into into a tree or something like that. It's like, oh, so a car that he's not in gets crashed. Like, oh, no. <laughs> Can we punk Zach Braff again so he beats up another 12-year-old? <laughs> uh, dude, the, all these fucking ideas... <laughs> That they, like, didn't do because they needed to do Judge Tegan. <laughs> it's a fucking Mad Lib, dude. Okay, Eminem, <laughs> what do we got? Uh, cooking show. Mm, I don't know. It was the first idea, and normally we go with the first ideas, but how about this? We get Eminem in a Gordon Ramsay-style show where he goes to different restaurants and bashes how cleanly the restaurant is, and he tastes their food. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Maybe like, that. What if Eminem says no... We could get, uh, mm, I'd say Lil Dicky, but he's got Dave now. Oh, mm. I-, I got you. Uh, how about a show where one of the Migos, like, they drive around with, like, Jay Leno, and, like, I mean, you know, they both like cars. You know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, yeah. And they're, like, two different people that like cars. So, you know, it's like, I mean, come on. Guys in cars. How about Drake? <laughs> <laughs> He, you follow him around his house as he does a stupid dance. <laughs> Drake buys a Drake, a duck, and it's called Drake's Drake. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's, um, it's, it's Drake and his Drake, but reenacting episodes of Drake and Josh. I was just about to say, like, <laughs> just, you know, like another celebrity with the first name Josh. And it's they just Josh Hartnett and, and Drake. And just go with no like self awareness at all. Ah, it's fucking gold. See, here's the problem: we're coming up with funnier shit <laughs> than is actually on the service. Yeah, we're thinking too hard. I mean, come on, you know, we need to be thinking smart, not thinking hard. I mean, those motherfuckers are thinking. Uh, those motherfuckers are thinking the right way. I mean, look, they got like a billion or so dollars to do their shitty idea. So, you know, what's wrong with us? We've heard of Chubby Bunny. Now you got Drake and he's seeing how many Tootsie Rolls get it. He can shove in his fucking mouth and still <laughs> sing the fucking Tootsie Slide. <laughs> with a slide whistle in his mouth at the same time. <laughs> the show's done. <laughs> This is the dumbest podcast. <laughs> We've got two listener requested albums for us to review this week, and I'm just going to go ahead and make the executive decision. We got to start yeah. with Name Like a Mortal Kombat character, Shady Plays. <laughs> And and a uh, uh, normal producer guy named Ryan Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah, who I got confused with uh, the producer from Macklemore, R- Macklemore? Ryan Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it can't possibly be the same guy. <laughs> no, it's not. Distorted. Uh, requested by, I have Anonymous written down. Oh, yeah, name. I got his name, uh, Nathaniel Maddox. There you go. Thank through. you so much for your request. He, he wrote a note saying that uh, he got a note. It, it, 
And maybe we maybe we could do this uh, going forward. Let us oh. know if you want to do this because uh, sometimes people write notes about their uh, you know experience with an album, and he was like, "Hey, I heard this on um, on uh, Bandcamp a long time ago, and it just kind of stuck with me." So I want to know what you guys thought of it. You found this on Bandcamp, which is great because I remember there was a time period when I first discovered Bandcamp. I downloaded so many fucking albums off there. I, mm. I unfortunately don't anymore. It kind of got bogged down by like bigger names realizing how easy of a platform Bandcamp is and it's kind of gotten polluted since then but you found this album you'll listen to it and it stuck with you me on the other hand i listened to it and i had to listen to it again today because i forgot everything about it yeah <laughs> I, i'm not even i'm not even exaggerating i couldn't remember any of the songs from this album so i had to go back again and revisit it as a refresher. And there's no genius lyrics, so uh, there's no uh, help on that front. <laughs> on Bandcamp, you can include the lyrics if you want, and they didn't even do that. Come on, guys. I do want to say this, though. Like, as I listened to the verses, like, just, you know, doing the old school ways to do it, where it's just like, no, nah, just listening to it again and just, like, feeling it and hearing how the lyrics hit you, you know, not getting the, you're not seeing what the words are, just feeling it, you know? And mm -hmm. I just remember, like, so many experiences on a lot of these songs was just like that hook was cool and the beats kind of spacey and nice but what the fuck did he just say on the verses i can't remember a goddamn thing <laughs> yeah that definitely doesn't help that i couldn't read along ryan hemsworth as a producer he's kind of hit or miss honestly this album is from 2011 it is a little dated in places there are some nice points where it's like, ooh, that was an interesting, like with the first track, I feel like that did have a nice spacey feel of like, ooh, mm -hmm. this was kind of cool. But yeah, as you listen on to it, there's, <laughs> what was it, a uh, uh, mile a minute where he's like, uh, oh, this is going to be so intense. And it's just like the, t -t 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 -t. and then it's just like, doo -doo -doo -doo. like it's this basic ass beat and him in the background going like, harder and faster, we thought it did it. It was just like, he's trying to make it seem like this is a fucking song. Like the hedgehog music or some shit and it's just like this isn't that intense at all he's like oh i'm going a mile a minute as i am obviously not rapping that fast and then it's like until like halfway through the first verse where he's like oh yeah i should probably rap a little bit faster now and then he raps slightly faster <laughs> and it's like a mile a minute really all i have written down for mile a minute is wow he sure raps fast <laughs> like i mean what else do you expect me to fucking get out of that? Honestly, the best track on the album it's is the, Mr. the Tongue Twister. <laughs> on our way is sorry to report because it all goes downhill from here. Is in my opinion the best track on the album. Yeah. All for nothing is a very close second, uh, mainly because of the production. I like how uh, the samples on that track were flipped. Best production on the album. Mm -hmm, with the, the weirdly chopped whispering that was going on. I, I do hate. <laughs> I, I like I liked it at first. <laughs> but when it got to the end. The fucking nose breathing. Like, I could do without that shit, man. I didn't need that. <laughs> you know, it's trying to sound epic, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, you could have cut that out. That kind of takes away from it. I, I did like uh, the beginning of, uh, what is it, Let's Ride, where he's like, you know, uh, a lot of people say I need to make more song, uh, songs for the chicks. And so as I was working on this song, I thought, yeah, I'm not going to make this one for the either. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this album fucking peters out. It fucking takes a goddamn nose spin after, uh, after No Fear. No Fear is the beginning of the end because tug of war leave a message higher than a kite and i'm living that hobson level song <laughs> it's like a concept like i'm fighting between good and evil man we got fucking jakai the motor mouth coming up in the requests <laughs> if you want a fucking good and evil concept <laughs> that's where you go tug of war one of the aspects of the production I'm not a big fan of, and it starts here, is the layered vocals. Yeah, no, get that out of here. It there's, sounds so cheap. And there's like plenty of times throughout some of the production where it, it, they'll do, they'll be doing like layered vocals and stuff like that, and they'll be doing like 
they're trying to make the the beat sound super epic and shit but like it just sounds like their music theory is bad and like stuff just sounds like chaotic sounding you know what i mean like the music sounds like it's out of tune and shit you know with how they're just trying to stack on shit but not thinking about like how it fits within the key of the music they're doing you know what i'm trying to say this shouldn't be a surprise even though it actually didn't get the lowest rating, but I'm not a fan of Higher Than a Kite. And the thing is, I like the song right before it that had the little anime sample going on, and it was like, leave a message, because I'm high as fuck right now. I'll, I'll be back when I get down. You know, like, mm. I thought that was kind of okay. And then the the very next song, which is like, I mean, who's this guy thinking he is? Like, Red Man, you know, like, oh, this is his persona, like, making joints about getting high. He's Afro but, like, Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, but it's just so over the like over the top with how the chorus works with the the nineteen forties, you know, uh, jazz cartoon. That fella's high, and it's like I could hear someone doing like electro slide thing with it, where they make it sound cool. But mm-hmm. like, no, it's still like in that jerky sound. So he didn't really like make it fit with it yet. So it just sounds like clumsy that he's sampling this thing you know what i'm saying and you gotta have the coughing dude right (laughs) how are you gonna know he's smoking if he ain't coughing a lot there was Uh. i think this was the song with the one lyric where he said something about like i fell through the big dipper while trying on orion's belt and it was like that was the first lyric that like felt genuinely interesting like hey i remembered that (laughs) you know (laughs) and that's like track 10 (laughs) uh i'm living I really didn't Nothing. care for the, uh... <laughs> Nothing of a song. I, I ain't doing this for her, I ain't doing this for him, I ain't doing this for them, I'm doing this for me. Yeah, I got it. And Man. I remember listening to this song and being like, wow, you know, every... At least most of the other songs, it felt like, well, this was kind of boring, but the chorus was good. Like, even... You couldn't even say that with this, you know? It's like, I'm living, I'm living... Like, okay, okay. You know? Uh, f- for me, the chorus is hardly ever hit. I can't really remember exactly... A track that I really dug the hook. Mm. I wasn't a fan of when he tried to do the sing songy shit, like on uh on our way, he kinda tried to sing his yeah, way through that. Whenever chorus. he was singing it didn't hit as hard, but when he was just rapping the hooks, I like that more. Um, this barely got a two for me. Yeah, two as well. <laughs> it's it's okay, but it's not memorable for me. It definitely didn't stick with me. Not poking fun at your experience at all, because we all have different experiences with things, obviously, for me. But moving on to... Oh, the next album. Oh, man. Uh, Aaron Tesler, thank you for your request of The Failure by B. Dolan. And Muse, have you had experience with this artist before? No. Because you you texted me... (laughs) Yeah, and, and you were like, "Oh, have you heard the album yet?" And I was like, "No, why?" And he's like, "Oh, no reason." <laughs> yeah, I, I texted you to 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 make you picture me like whistling and like my hands behind my back as I'm teetering on the balls of my feet, just <laughs> oh nothing. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I'll tell you why I texted you that specifically uh-huh. because I had no idea how to rate this. Uh. Because you've got how many fucking tracks? And there's like three or four actual songs on it? So I was like... It's it's like a spoken word album, right? Like, that's what I kind of thought. Yeah. This is one of the best albums I never want to listen to again. <laughs> like, oh, come on now. <laughs> I, I really, really, really... I'm, I'm probably going to end up giving this somewhere between a four and a four and a half because it is really goddamn good. This is great, but this is a little too fucking intense. It made me feel like shit. <laughs> I can't... I don't want to put myself through this again. <laughs> the only songs I have written down as, as songs, by the way, that I actually have ratings for, I'll go ahead and skip to that. Heart mm. Failure... Joan of Arcadia, Crow on the Riddle, and Young Americans. You didn't count uh, Sky Cycle Blues? I no, that was really I, cool. I didn't count that as a song. Mm. I fucking loved it, but I didn't count it as, uh, as a song. I'm going to go ahead and say, I liked way more on this album than I disliked. Um, honestly, low point on the album for me was Crow on the Riddle, and even then, I gave it an okay rating. I just wasn't a big fan of um, Between the Pine, 
and the yeah, singing was that was doing, on it. Yeah. It didn't really fit for me, but just the atmosphere on this uh, on this thing. Picture picture clipping. Okay, I'm I'm gonna compare mm. it to clipping for a sec, but just the atmospheric feel and tone that you got from uh, there existed an addiction to blood, uh. but just like with no song. It's just kind of lingering. You know what I thought when I heard track fucking eight, Bomzo for Baghdad. Yeah. As I listened to that song, I thought like, wow, this is like if Insane Clown Posse was smart. (laughs) (laughs) Am I lying? (laughs) Before you sent me the video, and we'll get to that in a second because I want to compare and contrast (laughs) those. Um, Mm -hmm. I pictured in my head... Almost like a, and I'll admit, I haven't seen the movie uh, Joker. I kind of pictured <laughs> this was what, what a Joker set would be like. Like Joker as a stand-up comedian, his shtick. Oh, yeah, that would be his uh, monologue at the end when he's on the uh, show with uh, Robert, with Robert uh, De Niro. De Niro. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but if I'm... I really wish I knew exactly what this album was because a lot of it is me just kind of speculating and guessing so the cover art is dolan as this bombs away character that he portrayed in in the video we saw on youtube which i wouldn't have known if i hadn't seen that video so a lot of guesswork for the rest of it throughout Hmm. the album you got who i'm gonna guess is b dolan talking to a kind of Microsoft Sam uh, bonsai buddy type voice, yeah. which I don't know if that's supposed to represent like another side of him or what, because I think he I think he called it Ben a couple times, and maybe that's is that B Dolan's first name? Like, is that the thing? Oh, is that maybe. The piece? Yeah, and then I also remember like the, just the computer voice having like slightly more like infection and like in, I mean inflection and life in it than I was expecting, you know. That's where I got the Bonsai Buddy bit. Yeah, oh, if, oh, oh. if anyone knows what Bonsai Buddy is, it was one of the first uh, kind of like, hey, it's it's a personal assistant program you put on your desktop. It's a little purple gorilla, and it'll talk to you and put a lot of viruses on your computer. <laughs> um, oh, but it's free, and he fucking tells you jokes. It's great when you have to reformat your hard drive and then re-download Bonsai Buddy because he didn't realize it was his fault. Yeah, the concept of the album is the idea that, like, he's the last man on Earth. Oh! Okay, so, no. Yeah, that's the idea. And so this computer buddy is his final friend. And I actually, like, that made me enjoy The Crow on the Riddle a little bit more. Mm. Because, like, yeah, it was this weird freeform song. But you had the intro where he's, like, you know, talking to the computer. And, like, again, you know, he has no one else to talk to. I did really and- like that. Yeah, and the computer's, like, trying to, like, liven him up and, like, hey, man, I want to hear a joke. You know, tell me a joke. And he's, like, he can only think of this macabre shit. You know, he's, like, uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Uh, Armageddon. Armageddon new. Armageddon sick and knocking. <laughs> and the joke is, like, that was in poor taste. <laughs> the first couple tracks, uh, summarizing them, uh, Generator is just kind of, like, booming piano chords. Uh, mechanical noises almost sounded like someone pulling like a start cord on like a weed whacker or something to get Mm -hmm. started and he just got these different samples of spoken word and this voice trying to like i I don't know exactly i couldn't hear what he was saying but he was like is anyone on the air is any just repeating that and then goes into still electric it all it sounds like a fucking artificial intelligence program almost like max headroom i was just i wrote that down yeah it's like a max headroom slam poetry the ripping cables out of me ripping ripping i'm dying to at first like i'm not gonna like i slightly laughed at first when i heard it i was like what is he doing i could but then like as you're listening to the album and you realize like oh this isn't gonna be a regular album (laughs) it kind of like settles you into the context of what's happening you know what i mean that's the first taste of the spoken word uh slam poetry i wasn't sure what on this album was him and what was a sample i was not like it it was just a fucking experience because the sound quality 
of the yeah. recordings is always kind of bad. So I'm like, all right, did hmm. he find this or is it him? Same goes for the um the uh, Sky Sickle Blues. I was like, is he doing this? Is this just something he found? Heart failure. Jesus Christ. Yeah, one of the first like real intense songs. And of course, you have Sage Francis on there. And then the fucking, oh my God, the lyrics when he was like, shit gets quiet. Like New York rappers after 9-11. It's quiet. Like Eminem after Bush won re-election. Ooh. Like, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. The, that gun punch. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Sage Francis, definitely one of the uh, one of the few rappers Jesus. I got into back in the Blogspot days when you know when I was too cool for the radio rappers, <laughs> man. Uh, fucking Sage Francis and Aesop Rock. I'm surprised I didn't find B Dolan at any point. Yeah, I'm surprised too. Like, what? <laughs> How did I miss this? <laughs> Going back into it, yeah, I really enjoyed Sky Cycle Blues. Yes. Uh, the fucking ode to Evil Knievel. Like, this song made me feel for a person in history I've never even thought about that deeply before. No, no, why would you? <laughs> Like, it was just like, what? Like, I had always just thought, oh, yeah, he's the guy that jumped the thing. And, you know, people talk about him jumping other things. And they're like, you know, this song's like Vietnam, you know, war veterans would come back and be like, you gave me hope during times. It's like, Jesus Christ. Mm. I didn't realize how real that shit was. Joan of Arcadia, another track, another uh, song. Pretty intense. Very fucking intense. The, uh,. Joan had a dildo named Jesus, which... Which it, it just I, feel like crassness for crassness is sake. I did the, think it was a little pretentious. Um, yeah. And I thought so until, until like, the second and third verse where it kind of went on and continued on. It was like, okay, I guess I kind of see. Yeah. No, like, I, um, yeah. The, the idea that he was saying, you know, like, okay, this is a person in history that we say, you know, had all these visions and was, like, crazy or whatever, but... You know, uh, you know, like they, they were inspired by their religion or ideology. And then we have this, you know, terrorist modern bomber or whatever guy. Yeah. And, like, and that guy's inspired by his ideology. And you hear all the racism and all that stuff in there. And did you get the tie in that he was trying to do? Like, I get the idea of like, you know, like, hey, you know, is this person more sane than this person? Or what is the difference between like, you know, these ideologies when you break it down? Like, because, you know, from both of their perspectives, they both think they are people, you know, trying to set the world right. You know what I'm saying? In, in their own way. Uh, Bombs over Baghdad. Um, Got to talk about this one. And the contrast to the video that you had sent me, I think... Yeah. I think it's worth noting. The video shows him performing this at a Sage Francis concert in Philly. Yeah, I think he, like, uh, uh, was a surprise performance. Yeah, he starts out in the back of the room almost like a heckler, and Sage Francis is like, hey, what the fuck? Shut up, man. And then then uh, he's like, hey, why don't you give the microphone to someone who knows how to use it? And I was like, okay, and he invites him up on stage. So already the audience just kind of thinks he's a heckler that is, you know, getting his big break. Yeah. In the Philly performance, he really lays on uh, the racism. He starts off right out the gate by saying, oh, so this is Philly, the city of brotherly love. And he does like the limp wrist. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he starts talking some racist shit and gets nuclear heat like the audience wants him dead it really is like a fucking performance art piece as you're watching it because you're like wait what's especially when i first heard the song not knowing anything about what's happening and just like like i felt like i was just being guided through the darkness of like what's happening is he racist is he is he trying to point out the issues of the world the, the crowd hates him and now they like him. What, what the fuck is going on what is this folks need to watch the video because the editing on it the editing on the video is so great um, like, it's like something you might see, you know, if MTV, you know, in the 80s was, like, still fucking edgy and shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, if you watch it, too, it would be like, what the fuck was that? Like, and people would talk about it, and it would be like, you know what I mean? Like a, Some urban uh, legend. Like, yeah. Um, oh, I just, like, as I watched that video, it was like, this is so fucking cool and creative and so just off the wall and unhinged. Like, who the fuck would think to do some weird shit like this? So, like, the whole time the audience is, you know, yelling, like, shut up, get off the stage, or whatever. Yeah, but, intensely, like, fuck you! <laughs> oh my god, they're so mad. And he's, like, dissing their city and all this shit. See, that's the thing, uh, going back to the album, though. Because the album version is considerably different. He doesn't go off on a racist tirade. 
he kind of has the audience on his side more so than in Philly. He starts off with the kind of typical jabs of like, eh, I'm in Staten Island. We're yeah, fucking I thought New it was York. Just a comedian. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where he's like, oh, boo. Like he's riling up the crowd, but you know, like a normal hack kind of stand up mm-hmm. comedian would. He wasn't layering on the racism. He wasn't getting the vitriol from the audience that he did on the fucking Philly video. And at one point, uh, when he goes into his poem and he's like, how do y'all feel about how the president's treating the war or whatever? And the whole audience is like booing. He even kind of makes a joke like, yeah, I kind of had a feel and I saw the glass pipes <laughs> in the hallway or whatever. Like he's yeah. joking with the audience and they're on his side. And there's even a really weird part where he's like, pull my finger. And there's like a weird like air horn. Yeah, like there's a random immaturity that just, and that's what I mean by like, it's the insane clown posse thing of like, there's this weird creative idea that's happening, but it's just randomly immature too, yeah. And that doesn't happen in the Philly video. The Philly video when he brings up the, how do y'all feel about the president or whatever, this audience is still convinced that this is like a racist asshole and he's gonna be like, <laughs> just like shitting on it and not taking it serious. But then, like, halfway through the poem, the audience kind of starts to turn. And it's like, so oh. incredible to see. <laughs> it's like they, they kind of realize what's going on. And like, yeah. oh, <laughs> this is like a dude that Sage brought on. And this is kind of dope. Okay, got it. That's so cool. After, tell me another riddle, fucking uh, Crow and the Riddle, we get... Another conversational track, You Seem Strange, where he's saying, oh, you're fucking drunk or whatever. Then there's this weird poem, uh, Love Will Survive, a very, very, very detailed poem about, it just seems like he looked down and saw a cockroach and just decided, I'm going to write this really fucking in-depth thing about this experience I had seeing this cockroach. I thought it was about seeing, like, I thought it was about, I thought this album was kind of like in the same vein of, uh, what's that clipping album where it was like the lone man in space, right? Oh, yeah. And so... Yeah, and I kind of got that, like, all right, throughout this whole album, he's the last man in the world, and he's going insane, and I thought, like, he saw an alien woman or something like that. I wasn't sure either until he, at the very end, mentions that it's a cockroach. Oh, see, I I, I heard him mention, like, I thought I heard him mention something about a woman with, like, clear skin or something like that, and I was like, whoa, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, I, I don't know. And, like, he wasn't sure if it was, like, a fantasy or if it really happened, you know? Yeah, just how he was talking about, like, walking in and out of the cracks of the table. Like, okay, so it's, like, a small thing. I was like, so is this a bug? Is it a person? So unless, at weird. the end, Cockroach was just, like, a, again, like, another metaphor, who knows? Yeah. But if we're talking about Last Man on Earth, they say, like, cockroaches can survive anything. So it kind of would make sense that he would kind of like just stumble across a cockroach as like another Mm -hmm. living life form, almost like another um, metaphor for himself because he's the only one that survived, whatever. This is the last man. It's all a sick joke. (laughs) Right. Yeah, I don't. It's very short and it's just extremely (laughs) detailed. You can get out of it, whatever, but... um, Then. Oh, Kate. (laughs) Then. I don't even really want to talk about Kate. Um, Man. Holy shit. This this song fucking intense. I'm just going to yeah, I'm just going to say this is when the album gets fucking real. Yeah. It fucking turned a corner and he's broken. He's screaming. The first half of the track is him just setting up and detailing what the story is. Very like, calm too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I know, I knew these girls, and, uh, you know, there were these guys, and we were hanging out with these brothers, and it was the something, the Caruso brothers or something like that. The and Russo brothers, da, 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 yeah. And, yeah, and then it just this fucking flip switches, and, it, like, it begins to talk about how, you know, these women within th- these communities have been, you know, abused and, and harassed and all these sorts of things, and how it's been kept quiet and all this sort of shit, and, like... Dude, he fucking goes off at one point. Like, you just hear, like, these, like, stark piano chords just, like, boom, like, really deep. Oh, and you just hear him go, like, murder, murder, so many girls. Where the fuck were the parents? Why oh. isn't everyone in shame? The kids, the kids, the kids all around later. I was like, oh, my fucking God. The way the fucking computer voice in the next track just immediately starts, wow, that was depressing. <laughs> I'm depressed. And just like a like a studio audience laughing like, "Oh man." Oh, so dark. Oh. 
<laughs> and like at that point, you realize like, oh, that fucking voice is done. That voice, is, yeah. he is done with that fucking voice. And after Young Americans, which I didn't really remember too much of that track. Yeah, either. I don't, unfortunately, yeah. where it is on the album it did it a disservice. It's in yes. the middle of yes. just like the most all of this anxiety, all of this tension. And this song just gets swallowed up. Like I, <laughs> yeah. there's way too much going on around it. It's way too busy. When Scorpion arrives, the final track. Uh, B. Dolan decides he's had enough of the computer voice and unplugs it. It's just so much. I don't, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just so much. It is an intense fucking experience, but I think one that is worth checking out yeah. <laughs> with the fucking uh, uh, parental guidance suggested, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I would say having listened to this review and knowing what to expect... Uh, you're gonna go in with a better, I, I guess, better prepared than we were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this isn't an album to be tripped up into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had Just no idea. Just driving along late night with your w- alone with your thoughts, and then here comes this album. Oh God, yeah. No, you, you <laughs> gotta you gotta make time for this one. Uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend it too, even if only once, because I listened to it like <laughs> once or twice. I don't know if I could really put myself through this again it's it's too much um but it's really well done it's so it's so well written the the production is incredible uh the instrumentation where it is on the album is always done so well so strong uh extremely moody industrial aspect with like noise it's never like too disjointed or like overbearing to where like it's oh it's this is just, like too noisy or whatever like it yeah. all kind of fits it's never annoying it's never annoying if anything it's just a little intense like it might yeah, be just you, too you want to hear what happens next you're never going oh my god why won't this fucking stop <laughs> Yeah, like early clipping shit where it's like, all right, yeah, can you lay exactly. off that shit, please? It's, it's not yeah, like, it's like do you want to hear a, an alarm clock going off for two minutes? Like, But it's somewhere between a four and a five for me. I really couldn't. Yeah, I think I'd give it a four and a half. Yeah. yeah. Because like you said, like genuinely inspired moments. But there are parts where it does feel like randomly immature. And the only parts I would uh, dock at points, honestly. Um, are for the songs that weren't as strong, like Young Americans and uh, Crow and Crow on the Riddle, because like I liked what they were doing with Dolan getting drunk and Ben just kind of asking for riddles, and eventually Dolan just kind of snaps and he just starts spamming like it's riddle after riddle after riddle, and he never like gives him time to answer. It's just like boom, 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 boom. I didn't like uh, was it Return to the Air. Like, that one was the most freeform and just kind of random oh, feeling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I kind of like how it ended with the whole, like, you hear a r- reporter saying, like, and we'll return to the air tomorrow, return to the air tomorrow, and just that repetition of, like, oh, yeah, no, they're not. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the last man on Earth, you know? Man, yeah. With that uh, context in mind, fuck, you're going to make me listen to this goddamn album again. <laughs> Maybe just one more time. Just Maybe. have the tissues on hand. Just... <laughs> Give me just one more. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, uh, I mean, may- maybe wait till after we're out of this. So, you know, th- this whole situation we're all in right now. So maybe hey, you yeah. won't feel as cramped. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, but that about does it for this week's episode of the Gone Off Podcast. Thank you so, so much uh, for checking us out this week. And uh, for the folks who requested these albums. And if there is an album that you would like to hear us talk about, a lot of people are taking advantage of this just the past few days. Yeah, oh my goodness. <laughs> had an influx of folks requesting albums. Uh, people are, are starting to take uh, the advice of um, the people that are in our discords. They're starting to uh, pool together some money and requesting albums like on behalf <laughs> of a group. Okay. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so I, yeah, like, oh, I can't right. exactly afford this whole re- this whole thing, but yeah, you got a good idea. I'll I'll pull some money towards that, and if, you know if, what? Let's let's make it official. Yeah, if you're part of the Rap Critic Discord, uh, <laughs> you guys can you know huddle up and uh, come up with a request. <laughs> These fucking communal requests, I love it. And, and you too can be a part of it. Uh. <laughs> Over on our uh, Kofi, that is k o f i dot com slash going off. Uh, G-O-I-N-O-F-F. It's a one-time $40 pledge. 
uh, to get an album reviewed on the show. If you recorded an album yourself and would like to hear us talk about it, that is $50. Quite, quite simple. Uh, the, the Patreon, patreon.com slash record if you want to join that, uh, 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 join that uh, Discord, see the episodes early, you know, see the other shit I, I, be, I be uploading and shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Things are <laughs> popping gonna... off in a big, big way. <laughs> uh, there's a station head, of course. We we always uh, bring that up. You know what I'm saying? If you want to listen to weird new music that I just keep adding on there, uh, definitely go there. If you want to hear, you know, stuff more interesting than uh, certain millionaires who just want to give you boring dance songs. <laughs> 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 if you just need a little bit of, it, I mean, hey, some people might want it. You know what I'm saying? Some people might want that. But if you just, you know, if you just happen to be the person who wants a little bit more variation, you know what I'm saying? You can go check that out. You know, if there's a place that you can rate us uh, and you're listening to us there please go ahead and do that because that definitely helps us get the promotion and gets uh more people uh being made aware of us we gotta get big enough to be on that music podcast recommendation thing on spotify when you go yes over there. <laughs> yes there's no fucking reason why not at this point <laughs> Word of mouth is who, who always... else is reviewing two albums per podcast who who gives you that experience <laughs> who the fuck is reviewing b dolan in 2020 you boys. This fucking album from 2008. You boys. Who's reviewing this random album from Bandcamp? <laughs> you boys. Who's going to give it to you? <laughs> you boys. Uh, but until next week for the Going Off podcast, thank you very much for checking us out. I'm Muse. And I'm Ram Critic. And one day the long fought battle between humanity and the forces of greed and division will end. And on that day, finally free, we're going to throw a motherfucking party. Party.